uh, had a good uh, week of practice, took the weekend off as a group, and then practiced again last night. Um, obviously, day off today, Monday's our day off, and then back at it Tuesday. All right, members of the media, if you have a question for Coach Mike Gundy, please click raise hand, and we are going to try and get to everybody. Our first question is going to come from Robert Allen from Triple Play Sports. Go ahead, Robert. Mike, uh, I heard an interesting comment from West Virginia coach Neil Brown after they beat TCU this weekend, and he talked about when he came into the Big 12, he thought it was a one-phase game. Whoever had the best offense won games, but he said this year it's, it's really three-phase football in the Big 12. It got me thinking your team has felt three phases all season. Do you see Saturday – being very much a three-phase game. I think there's some truth to what he said. When he came into this league, he had every reason to think that that was the way it was. It, it had been that way for about 10 years. Uh, it's it's made a, a little bit of a 360 here. And so uh, teams are winning with, uh, with special teams and defense. And um, offensive production has obviously not been what it has been based on the youth and the quarterback in this league. Is Kansas State, normally I wouldn't think they'd be a good opponent to face before you face Oklahoma. But with some of the things they tried to do in that game with you, it, it, it looks like it kind of leads into some of the preparation for Oklahoma. Or does that have, even matter or factor in? Oh, I mean, I think there's some comparisons. You're, you're, you're looking at completely different quarterback play with the two schools. And uh, in most cases, uh, defensive strategy is going to start with the other team's quarterback, but uh, a lot of the same concepts with the guard tackle pull and uh, play action pass, naked things in that area. Our next question comes from Chris. Some of the stunning on defense. I, I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I just said even some of the stunting on defense. Um, there's quite a bit of twist and movement with Oklahoma. Um, a lot of pre-snap stem uh, is a little different than what you see. Um, but uh, the, the covers, you know, they're going to play some quarters, play some cover one, which is somewhat to, similar to what Kansas State played. That, that part's true. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Our next question comes from Chris Becker from the Ocali. Go ahead, Chris. Coach, good morning. Good morning. So you said after the Texas game that Spencer had to limit his turnovers. Uh, he did that against Kansas State. You know, how important is it going forward, especially against OU, that he continues to limit turnovers for this team's success? I, I think the thing you're seeing each week, and I've said this now for two months, is uh, if you just watch – I watched more football over the weekend than I have probably in 15 years. I just chose to stay home Saturday and watch football. And it's coming down to turnover, special teams play, and discipline is what's making the difference in the majority of these games. So teams that are turning the football over, opposite of teams that are gaining turnovers, are struggling to win football games. Right. And on the other side of the ball, you know, what have you seen in, uh, when you've looked at film from Spencer Rattler uh, this season? Well, he's a much better player now than he was six weeks ago. Uh, he's getting some games under his belt and – and getting adjusted a little bit and, and making plays. Obviously, he's got a strong arm and uh, he's got some savvy. He can move around, make some plays with his legs. So he's come, a lot, he's come quite a way in four or five weeks. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, when you've had success against OU, sometimes it's come from some of your uh, not successful teams by your standards, 14 and 18. Um, have you found a common denominator in, in what works for you when things go right in this series? Uh, I've not, I mean, I've not uh, known that I've put the, the thought into that. I, I obviously each year is different. Each team's different. Um, you know, we prepare the same for Oklahoma as we do for any other team and, uh, you know, try to get prepared and go out and play the best we can. And, uh, I haven't really done a lot of research into um, those um, things that you just mentioned to me. Can you tell this week annually is different for your players? When you say we, we do the same thing each week? 
You yeah. know, I assume most teams do that, but do players still approach a week like this differently, whether it's, you know, if you're playing Missouri State or, or Oklahoma, is, is a rivalry week, do the players approach it different? Well, I, I would think there would be a difference uh, in their opinion if you're playing a, a lower level school compared to a Big 12 school. Um, the way it's set up in our conference, uh, you know, you have to try to, to win each one of them. If you don't win one to get to the other, then you're in the same boat. Um, I would think that they have a different feel this week than other weeks. Um, all I do is gauge their practice. This team has practiced very well throughout the year. This team practiced really well last night. So it looks like to me that they're focused and in, in trying to get as prepared as possible for this game. Our next question comes from Garen Emig from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Garen. Mike, your defense has carried you through just about every win, uh, with the exception of, of the, the way you played up in Lawrence against Kansas. Do you anticipate that will that will need to be the case against Saturday at, in Norman, or is is the need there for you to play more complimentary football? Do you need more from your offense to uh, to, to rise up with the level of your defense to prevail? Well, our defense has played really well this season, and uh, and it's obvious our offense has not been as productive. Uh, you know, there's we're down three offensive linemen, and and uh, when you're playing, and we're playing two freshman guards. And so when you're playing freshman guards, you have two things that are going on, and it's no secret. They're not as strong as they need to be to play in this at this level, and they're not as experienced. So um, offensively, we're trying to play or be compatible with our defense and our special teams, and we need to play a well-rounded football game. Defensively, this is a real challenge for us this week with the skill set that Oklahoma has on the perimeter and the most athletic quarterback that we've played up to this point. And offensively, we have to find ways to maneuver and, and get more points than we've been able to get over the last few weeks. A uh, quick follow-up. Do, we, do you anticipate Tylen being well enough to, to play Saturday? Well, I think that we're, we're getting healthy in, in different areas. Uh, we've got a ways to go. Um, it, it's really hard for me to say six days out with, with where we'll be. Um, but, but hopefully we'll have the guys that we need to be at, uh, up and running and play at a high level Saturday. Thanks. Our next question comes from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Mike, I was going to ask you a little bit more about player availability. Um, the running back situation, that seemed maybe most tenuous. Um, where are you in that regard with, with Chuba and LD getting healthy? And um, how much could we potentially see Desmond out there? Well, we're hoping to get those guys out here in the, uh, in the latter part of the week. Um, I mean, I think everybody knows now. It's pretty much gotten out there. There are no secrets. We were a, I mean, uh, we, we limped our way through Kansas State. I'll be real honest with you. I had real concerns about uh, what direction we were going to go in that game. Uh, fortunately, we got really good play in special teams and defense. And offensively, we just haven't had very many guys that are practicing. And so um, I'm hoping that we'll have the majority of these guys back. It's when, when they have this, this, the type of injuries they have, it's hard to tell. Um, whether they'll be there today or whether they'll be there Friday. So hopefully we'll get some of these guys healthy and give us a chance to play. Uh, a question not related to that necessarily, but the series uh, with OU, um, you guys uh, have, have had some games where it's been close, OU's prevailed. Do, do those things carry over? I mean, you've got series where you guys have been dominant. I think about the way you guys have dominated at Texas, for example. Um, does, does, does stuff like that carry over? Uh, you've got guys that have experienced, you know, goods and bads in series. Does some of that um, ebb and flow and, and carry into to next season or, or games in the future? I don't really think so. Young people nowadays, they – um, they have short memories. Uh, you know, they, they live on their phones. They, they get information instantly. They move on from one thing to the next. And um, as I said, the only thing that I can ever gauge our football team on is our preparation each week. Um, there's some weeks that I have concerns based on a lack of focus. Uh, and then we try to find a way to win on Saturday. Uh, there's some weeks that we're really, really focused and I feel like we're going to play really sound in all three phases. And it just varies week to week with uh, young people. I wish I had an answer for it. I think if you 
if you polled the coaches, uh, 65, I think it's 65 Power 5 conference coaches across the country, um, they would, in most cases, give you the same answer. Um, why it's that way, we're not sure, but our team has been focused this year. They've practiced really well. Uh, they compete, uh, and it's important to them to be successful for each other. And for that reason, I feel good about our football team. Thanks, Mike. Our next question comes from Cliff Brunt from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, Coach, uh, you'd mentioned your young offensive line. Um, Oklahoma's leading the Big 12 in run defense. They're among the best in pressuring the quarterback, and they've gotten better with Ronnie Perkins back. What kind of a test does their front present for your young offensive line? Well, it's a challenge for us. I mentioned it earlier. This will be their biggest test. Uh, the guys up front for them, That now that they've gotten some of those guys back, um, you know, they're competitive. They can rush the quarterback, and they've been good against the run. So, um, offensively, we have to have a really good strategy. Uh, we have to be patient in the way that we want to attack uh, and reduce turnovers and play as consistent as possible up front with our blocking schemes. Our next question is going to come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike. How's it going? You get, good. To, you know, get to spend a little bit of time with the family in your off week? I did, yeah. I, uh, I was really lazy this weekend, which is unusual, and uh, just laid around, watched football, and hung out and cooked. Uh, sometimes you need that. I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, in the past you've talked about how you were impressed with, with Spencer and not getting too competitive in games and, and you know, staying in the moment. With this being a big Bedlam game and his first Bedlam game, how important is that factor for him? I feel really good about where Spencer is um, and with his composure. Uh, he's, he's, been, uh, he's turned to 360 from where he was at this time last year. The positive about Spencer is he's ultra competitive. You guys watch him play. Uh, he's not scared. He'll compete. He fights right to the end. We needed him to adjust his composure some when things didn't go well. Quarterbacks have to have short-term memories, okay? It is what it is. Some, most of the time things go well, sometimes things don't go well. You gotta get over it really quick and you have to be composed. And he's much better this year than he was last year at this time. Thank you, Mike. Our next question comes from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Mike, the uh, the Oklahoma run game has been uh, a little bit different with uh, with Stevenson back. What uh, what kind of a challenge does that pose for you with the uh, with all the other weapons that they've got? Well, they're going to run their their guard tackle pull play, and, and uh, they're going to read it. That's that's what they uh, they want to do, and uh, it's a difficult play to stop. Defensively, you have to have a really good plan, uh, and essentially in football, you're a half man short in that play. So. Um, we, we, uh, we have to continue to, to stop that play and, and work at it uh, and be able to tackle well in space. You, you get a guy, one, one guy that, that should be there in the majority of the plays, and you hope that those guys can tackle and get the running back and or the quarterback, if he keeps it, get them down. Is Stevenson uh, quite a bit different than any, uh, any other running back you face to this point? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, you know, as far as evaluating, you know, specifics talent-wise, um, they're definitely better with him in there. I'll tell you that. Uh, and and um, you know, we we face different kinds of backs, but but ultimately, you're going to have a guy that's going to show up uh, in those in those areas, and you have to be able to get to get those guys on the ground and limit big plays. One, uh, one last one about Spencer Sanders. Uh, is, is this a week when you have to, uh, you have to monitor kind of how he uh, is, is managing himself um, his emotions? Are you talking about in the game? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, not, a man, it's not any different than any other game. Uh, you know, if, if Spencer gets um, to a point where he's too involved emotionally or loses composure, then you put the other guy in and let him play a little while until he calms down. Uh, I, I don't see that with him at this point. He's been really consistent this year uh, and, and developed and, and doing much better. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, you, you hope that you have a lot of good plays, but you're going to have some tough plays when you're competing against good football teams. 
and he has uh, done a really good job this year in staying composed, and I wouldn't expect anything else from him. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Next question comes from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good. Hey, um, Rodarius is, has obviously had a, a really great season. What's kind of impressed you the more the season goes on with him? Yeah, he's been consistent. Um, he's covered really well. Um, in, in our defense, you have to you got to be able to play man coverage the majority of the time. And uh, he, he's adjusted uh, with Coach Knowles' scheme. Each year he's gotten better and better. Um, he, he practices hard. Um, doesn't say a lot, just competes. Uh, and he's just improved. He's gotten better. And uh, we feel really good about his ability to cover. You, you mentioned OU's talent on the perimeter earlier. What kind of – challenge and, and stuff does, does, does Rodarius have this week trying to defend some of those receivers? Well, they're going to be the most talented team uh, as a group on the perimeter that we face this year. Um, I haven't looked in depth at uh, the teams that we play coming, uh, coming up in the next month, but uh, they're very talented. They're, you know, obviously they're all, you know, five-star guys or whatever you, you call those guys. So they're, they're very talented and, and they have speed and can make plays. So, this will be a big week for our guys to be able to, to really work hard and cover. Is this a chance for him to maybe make kind of a statement for his future a little bit? Oh, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't really pay much attention to that. Uh, uh, you know, it's the same thing we tell the players. You know, anytime a player has a question about the NFL, the answer is the same. All the NFL does is turn the tape on and watch and see. They, they make a difference to them who it is. They just, they just see the results they get on tape. You make plays, you get a chance to play in the NFL. You don't, you, you go get a real job. And so I think that's pretty consistent each week. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Our next question comes from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, you've been involved with this series for the better part of four decades. How have you seen it change in terms of importance, competitiveness, all those kinds of things? We got game day going to be in Norman. I don't know, this is the five, fifth or sixth time Bedlam has brought uh, game day to, to one of the schools. How have you seen this rivalry change? Well, I mean, I don't know that I've put a pencil to it over the last four decades, but uh, I think that this these games have been very competitive. There, there's been times that uh, we've played our best football, our best game of the year, and, and lost the game um, based on – um, you know, certain things happen in the way the ball bounces different ways. Um, but uh, our players uh, continue to practice well, as I mentioned. Um, they, they, uh, they're buying into the system and what we're trying to accomplish. And those are really the only things that I can gauge uh, in us getting ready to play. Um, you know, all the other history and things that people talk about is uh, – you know, it's really irrelevant in this game, in my opinion. It's it's a game that's coming up between two teams that have never played each other. So I, I just haven't put much thought into it based on I don't really want to waste a lot of time thinking about that compared to getting ready to play in the game. And then our last few questions here. Uh, our next question is going to come from Dean Rule from the Ocali. Go ahead, Dean. Hey, Coach. I appreciate you taking the time today. Sure. Uh, Talking about Trace Ford, you know, he's been a really important piece, obviously, this whole season, and he's going to be important in this game. What specifically do you want to see from him? Trace has played extremely hard. He's given great effort. He's played reckless. Um, he's tackled well and been athletic, and that's his strength. Um, he, as he continues to get a little better each year and each game, those are the characteristics that make him a good football player. Um, he, he plays uh, with great effort throughout the game, he never slows down. And he's one of those guys that we'd like to be able to get to the quarterback a couple times, um, make a couple tackles for loss, uh, and really be accountable for his individual effort in our schemes and trying to slow down their offense. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Yeah. Our next question comes from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Mike. Um, this seems like a million years ago to me, so it may to you as well, but um, you guys played Tulsa in your opener, and uh, they've obviously continued to have uh, some big wins, and Zayvon Collins is a guy that 
he stood out when he played when they played you guys. Do you remember much about him and um, just how how clued into what kind of player he was were you guys before, during, after that game? Well, he's played well for them for a while. Um, I don't know. I know at least, you know, he started showing up on the radar. It's been, what, two years now where he's been pretty well known. And um, he makes a lot of plays. He can run. He's physical. Um, I watched a little bit of their game, uh, maybe a quarter and a half of their game the other night, and he showed up and made two or three really big plays in crucial times in that game. Um, I, I would think that he's a guy that's, that's going to get a chance to, to play in the NFL. Um, but he's a good football player, and it seems like that the defense uh, at Tulsa kind of rallies around his play and his attitude. Um, I, I hear great things about him on and off the field, uh, which is awesome. His character, they say, is, is really good. And in most cases, when you have a talented player that has great character, it, it generally ends up being uh, or, or coming to – uh, the top like he is in his play in these games. Since you don't have to mess with him anymore, he, no, he's no longer your problem on the field. Yeah. Being yeah. A, be, he's a guy from Hominy. I mean, not exactly a hotbed. It's a good, it's a good football school, but not cranking out D1 guys. You as a guy in state, you sort of look at him and say, all right, that, good for us as a state, good for him to, to come from a place like, you know, a smaller yeah. place like Hominy. Well, he, he, you know, we, we've talked four or five, six years here about uh, how we feel as a staff here about Oklahoma high school football. And we feel like that it's, it's considerably better than it ever has been. And um, he's a perfect example of that. Uh, we could go back and look. Now, I don't know the history, but I'm going to guess that he was very, very lightly recruited and probably didn't have enough stars, for lack of a better term, to make people think that uh, he was something different than what he was. And uh, it's, it's, there's guys out there. There's players in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, some of them come from smaller towns or underdeveloped, and uh, that's, you know, all comes down to projection and recruiting. But um, I'm, I'm very happy for him and his success. I'm going to guess that he's going to go on and play this game for four or five, six more years and, and uh, make everybody in the state of Oklahoma proud. Thanks, Mike. All right, it looks like we're only going to have time for one more question here before the 10 o'clock. Uh, it'll come from Garen Emig from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Garen. Mike, you've mentioned several times you're, uh, you're, you're adapting to things over, over your time as head coach at OSU. Um, you, you've changed through the years on, on your approach to a lot of different things in the organization. Does that specifically apply to Bedlam, to, to, uh, to your fan base's expectations in Bedlam? Are you able to Come to t come to terms more easily with with that kind of thing as you've as you've gotten gone through the years. Um, well, the, the I'm not really worried about outside sources. Um, you know, we have 200 people in this organization. We have 130 players. We have about 70 personnel, administration, everybody. Um, we we need to compete and be able to satisfy each other in this organization. The commitment we make. Um, we have a core set of values that are in our program that has not changed and won't ever change here. I've made adjustments over the years based on learning more about people, um, just being a part of the job, gaining more patience over the years. But we have a core set of values that's running on 16 years here that won't ever change. And that's what keeps us where we are. That's why we can compete against anybody in the country on any given weekend. It's never been that way at Oklahoma State football, ever. That's not changing here. But I'll say this, that the people in this organization um, understand commitment. They understand work ethic. They understand accountability. They understand loyalty and they understand structure. And those are things that we believe in here. We talk about them every day, every week and throughout the season. Um, and th that's where we as an organization, not just necessarily me, have grown over the last 16 years.